Hi guys, so let's now take a look at the potential essay themes we might see in uh, the Paper 2 Pre-U Economics of course. We're going to focus on potential microeconomic themes here. I've just put down some uh, suggested essay themes that you may want to think about. Uh, so these are uh, just sort of titles that I've put down thinking about the sort of things that could come up. Okay, uh, We'll have another lesson looking at the macro side of things as, as well. Right, so number one, given the reduction in trade union power, to what extent uh, do wage differentials occur? Yes, I am kind of expecting a labour economics essay to uh, be in this essay's paper. Uh, will it be on trade unions? Will it be on the living wage? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Will it be on wage differentials? Again, it's very, very difficult to say. Will they try combining different elements uh, to really test the depth of your understanding, possibly? Uh, so, uh, for instance, in understanding that there are differentials still between unionised and non-unionised workers, according to uh, some research that I've read. Um, so that's quite interesting, but those differentials have really, really come down as trade union power has uh, has really been diluted in most sectors. However, the teaching unions more, more recently have actually had a big merger between two of the largest teaching unions, uh, and they have together become the NEU, uh, which is the largest teaching union now. Okay, so obviously that gives them a bit more power, a bit more market substance. Okay, number two, evaluate the role of elasticities in enabling profit maximization. Uh, so possibly elasticities might be in there as well. It might be in there uh, instead of labor or vice versa. But if this is in there, this is quite a nice question. Really, it's asking you to focus on uh, yes, that they will use price elasticity of demand, absolutely. That is, of course, where uh, we will be able to actually derive MC equaling MR on the elastic part of the demand curve. So where the demand curve is quite price sensitive, that is where MC will equal MR. Okay, so that's really important. Uh, but of course, revenue maximization also occurs where price elasticity of demand equals one. So it depends on the firm's objectives, okay? Uh, so it really does, but you need to understand those other elasticities to be able to answer this. So for instance, in uh, actually providing cross uh, elasticity of demand and substitutes and uh, complementary goods, uh, that's, that's very, very relevant. And understanding income elasticity of demand uh, and corresponding that with economic growth in particular regions. Again, very important. Right, number three, to what extent will oligopolies inevitably tend towards collusion? Now, it might be that sort of theme, uh, which again is a very nice essay theme, or alternatively, it might be saying oligopolies are the best form of market structure, discuss, or something to that effect. And then getting you to actually discuss other areas and why oligopolies might be and might not be the best form of market structure. Uh, this is potentially a lovely question. Uh, then we've got number four, the plastic bag charge has been a complete success. Evaluate this statement. Well, has it been a complete success? For who? For which economic agents? Certainly not for plastic bag makers. Certainly not for them. What about the actual resources that go into actually producing a plastic bag versus those reusable bags? Are actually plastic bags far more efficient uh, than they're actually given credit for? Yes, there are nasty negative uh, consumption externalities or production externalities. You could use either here. Um, so... Yeah, uh, lovely question potentially, okay, because there's a lot of unintended consequences uh, with regard to this, and it could also be about things like uh, the risk of uh, food poisoning as a result of reusing uh, these reusable bags on food shops and so on. Right, number five, all firms are profit maximizers. Evaluate this statement. Uh, so this is really a question about firms' aims and objectives. We know that uh, yes, most firms are likely to try to focus on profit maximization, but there can be various things that actually get in the way of that. But it's also just 
really important to consider over what period are they trying to actually maximize profits are they short-term profit maximizers and can they be prone to short-termism or are they more like amazon netflix uber and look towards the long-term potential for their business and long-term profit maximization uh, so uh, yeah all sorts of ways you could take that question potentially a lovely one right given the obesity uh, epidemic the sugar tax is fully just justified evaluate this statement so uh, a lot of similarities of course with the uh, plastic bag charge we know government intervention is uh, highly imperfect we know further to this that when it has come to that sugar tax we've seen coca-cola use that as a uh, opportunity to actually reduce bottle size and increase price um, quite uh, substantially above the actual threshold of the sugar tax uh, so that's that's really interesting uh, and then you've got other manufacturers that have just changed their recipes well is that what consumers wanted is that really maximizing their economic welfare um, do we need a nanny state looking after us like that uh, there's there's all sorts of arguments that you can certainly offer there okay um, interesting stuff and of course you know these taxes are, are regressive aren't they uh, okay so number seven the optimal form of market structure is monopolistic wow this sort of question has been in there once before um, so why would this be the case well they offer differentiated goods but they uh, don't exploit the consumers because they don't have sufficient market power uh, in most circumstances okay um, but do they really achieve dynamic efficiency? Well, most monopolistic firms, of course, only achieve normal profits. So uh, this, again, is a really nice question to explore. Um, number eight, I've gone back to elasticities here. Uh, and I think this is solely about elasticities. So elasticities are of even greater importance than ever before. Discuss. Uh, okay, well, why would this be the case? Well, think about the actual information that these firms now actually have access to about what we want to buy, when we want to buy it, the way in which Uber can actually plug into data of how many people are actually opening up their Uber app at any given time enables them to determine pricing structure really effectively there. Okay, right, um, so number nine, um, to what extent do monopolies require greater regulating? Uh, so this is just bearing in mind the, uh, the big tech titans like uh, Facebook, Google, uh, and, and Amazon, and uh, so on, okay? Uh, those firms, uh, there's a lot of discussion regarding their uh, ability to actually ex exploit consumers, uh, and actually have far more information than governments have about their citizens. So to what extent is there a need for actually regulating those? Well, you might not quite like the uh, look of that sort of question possibly, but think about the things that could be done. You could have market regulators, obviously, but you could also be looking at, when it comes to any uh, acquisitions that they want to follow through, a lot of people were arguing that Facebook should not have been allowed to actually take over what WhatsApp uh, and uh, that sort of uh, takeover reduces future competition in such markets because uh, WhatsApp was seen as a real rival to Facebook uh, so that's quite an interesting one um, okay and then of course you've got the uh, option for various various uh, different types of interve interventionist policy on monopolies which could be about breaking them up uh, yeah, very, very touchy stuff. Okay, number 10. To what extent is privatisation preferable to nationalisation? Okay, uh, a more straightforward one there, which is really looking at public provision versus private provision of uh, perhaps merit goods, perhaps uh, even pure, well, not necessarily pure public goods, but certainly quasi-public goods here. Okay, uh, interesting stuff. 